everyone. In this video tutorial, I'd like to take a look at the reaction energy diagrams and help you understand what is the information you should be able to pull from those diagrams in order to better understand the reaction mechanism and the reaction itself. So if we take a look at it over here, we see that this axis here represents energy, and then this is generically called reaction progress. Sometimes it'll say time, but that's kind of just an idea of this is the reaction moving forward. So over here we have R, which stands for our reactant, and where this line is tells us about the energy of the reactants that we have. At the other end here we have our product, and that also is at the level that indicates the energy within the product that we're forming. So now as you can see, between R and P there are two peaks. Those two peaks represent the fact that there are two steps in the reaction mechanism required in order to go from the reactant to the product. So the number of peaks you have represents the number of steps in the reaction mechanism. At the top of each of these peaks, we have a transition state. So the transition state is something that cannot be isolated. It's got bonds that are partially formed and partially broken. And these are the species right before they transition from the identity of the reactant to the product. The closer the transition state is to either the reactant or the product, the more it'll look like one or the other. What I mean by that is, over here, this transition state is closer to the intermediate than it is to the reactant. So that transition state would look more like the intermediate. So now, the intermediate is something that is actually going to be formed in the process of this reaction mechanism, and it's something you could isolate. So now this intermediate is going to be formed in the process of this reaction mechanism, but then it is also going to be consumed. So the intermediate is something that is not going to be present in the overall balanced reaction. The next thing you'll notice here is this EA. So EA represents the activation energy barrier. Essentially, that's going to be taking from the energy level of the preceding species up to the peak of the next transition state. So here it's the energy of R to the peak. So the difference in energy between those two, that's the activation energy barrier. Essentially, it's the amount of energy required in order to go from this step over the pump into the next step. So then here, this is also an activation energy barrier. So now we're going from the preceding species, which in this case is the intermediate, to the peak, and the difference in those energies would be the activation energy barrier. Now, based on this, you can figure out which one is the rate determining step. Essentially, it's gonna be the slowest step, and it will be the slowest because it has the highest activation energy barrier. So this here would be our rate determining step because it has a much higher barrier to get over than does this one here. Lastly, we can also figure out the difference in energy between the product and reactant, and that can tell us whether our reaction is exothermic or endothermic. So in this case, because our product is higher energy than our reactant, we understand that that means that this is going to be an endothermic reaction. So those are some of the things that you can pull out from looking at a reaction energy diagram.